so like going to the airport is obviously wherever you live is always an ordeal right early on you ask like, friends to drop you off at the airport you can't do that forever that's just rude it was around 2007 where i was middling all over the country meaning the the middle act the feature act they call it and just beginning the headline a little bit and making dog shit money. Some of the weeks I was netting $150. I still had to, you know, do the airport thing and my wife is my fiance at the time and, you know, she could take me sometimes, but she was either doing gigs or working still in like, you know, the, the civilian world uh, part-time. So I, I had to have, figure out a way to get to the airport. I ended up finding a guy who would drive me for for cheap. I'm living in MacArthur Park, shitty, not a great neighborhood. Sorry if you live there now. This guy would pick me up and take me, and he had a town car, but it was like a little older. He'd take me for like $35, something like that, which I considered a great deal for, you know, you could pay hundreds for like a high-end car service. He picks me up and he's taking me and I, I'm, I have a good rapport with him and he's being very professional. I mean, it is yes sir, no sir. And, and then one day I make a joke about something and it's like he, he kind of like looks at me like, oh, okay, you're not a corporate guy where I don't have to call you sir. I'm like, no, you know, you call me Tom. And I say something else, I joke with him and it's like, he's like, oh, he goes, uh, do you smoke weed? And he opens up his console. He's like, do you want to hit this? Like he just, he went from I'm your driver, I'm professional, to do you want to hit this? And I was like, uh, I don't know, I'm good. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And he, he smokes it. And I was like, um, and I ask him, you know, I go like, do you, do you fuck with other drugs? And he goes, well, I love it all. And I go, all? And he tells me, he's like, you know, I like, love coke, I love this. He's like, but there's nothing like smoking rocks. And I'm like, you smoke crack? I'm in the back seat, like, please tell me more. And I go, what, what's it like though? He's like, oh, it's the best, you know? Like, what do you do when you smoke crack? You know, it's like you smoke weed and you're like, I wanna listen to music or watch this movie or, you know, think about things and write or like, what do you do on crack? And he goes, well, my favorite thing to do is I'll sit in my house, I'll smoke rocks, and then I look out the people and I watch people walk by and I just freak out. I'm like, this dude's insane. And he's in his 60s, by the way, which I think changes. He's got white hair, he's got a white mustache. And my neighborhood was predominantly, at the time, El Salvadorian. And I hear him, he's like, I love these. He goes, I love these. I think he's talking about a car or something, you know, like, what, Cadillacs? He's like, these little brown ones. And I turn and it's just like a hot, Latin chick and I'm like oh like these he's like these are my favorite man these little brown ones cause little brown ones I was, like, I was like oh Jesus dude I go yeah he goes oh god he's like I've, I've had them all those are my favorite dude I kept this guy as my driver and we talked about it we're like should we have this guy I mean he does smoke crack like is that a good idea to keep him as our driver I'm like look he might be a lunatic, I know he loves drugs, but he's reliable. The only thing that made me uh, stop calling him, honestly, was that one day he just wasn't there. I call him and I'm like, dude, where are you? And he's like, oh man, I got pretty fucked up. Forgot, but uh, hit me up on the next one. I'm like, no, 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 there is no next one. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I know. It's that he had a crack binge, and if it wasn't for the power of crack, I would still be calling Henry to pick me up. I miss you, Henry. Yeah.